Jess, it looks like you just had way too much. I know it's always hard. They always are. But you had way too much fun. I, we did. We had a, really had a blast. It was, it really was um, my most favorite project to date that I've worked on by leaps and by far, by far. And I've worked on a lot of really cool things. I've been lucky. This, this was by far the best. So you're prepping a movie oh, oh. about movies. Do you right. have a question? Is oh, your, uh, did you go in your question? Oh, I'm sorry. No, is that your question? Yes. Oh, okay, well, wait. He has to tell us about his journey first. You know, this, think of the students out there. Uh, the, the, the journey for me was, it started early. It was uh, high school. And like in the first day of high school, uh, my, f my friend that I had grown up with, we went to the theater and we signed up for something called the lighting crew, the backstage crew. And... <laughs> I'm telling you, I learned, in those four years of being on that crew, I learned everything that I needed to know to move on to, not everything, but it was, we loved it so much, and I don't know if we loved uh, the theater so much, but we loved being with one another. There was about eight of us, and we had the keys to the school. <laughs> we cooked in the janitors, you know, in their office, <laughs> used their hot plate at night. We slept in the lighting booth. We created such an amazing bond that um, there, was, there was absolutely no way I wasn't doing anything except for designing scenery for theater or films or a window or what, whatever, whatever it took. And, and that was kind of it. And then, you know, about you know, fourth year into high school, my guidance counselor was like, you know, you can go to college for, for theater. And I was like, Re okay, fine. So I, you know. <laughs> Went to a SUNY school in New York and you know, lived in the theater there for another four years and then just started working. And um, I didn't actually come out starting um, being a, uh, a set designer, art director, production designer. I, I worked my way up through uh, building sets and working in the construction department and, and all that for a number of years, which was great experience. So, um, and that's it. So one thing led to another, but started out in high school. No, yeah, it's all you. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so I think one of the things that, that I think is common with everybody who's in this business, and I certainly see it with, with you, Jess, is the passion and the excitement of creating these worlds. And uh, as I started to say, it's like you're, you're not only doing the movie that you're telling, but you were actually doing five other movies within the movie. So I can't even imagine what that set breakdown looked like. You know, there's a, if I'm correct, uh, Western with, with a singing cowboy, yeah. right? Uh, synchronized swimming, Esther Williams type movie in a pool, a period drawing room drama, musical comedy with singing and dancing sailors in a bar, and then the epic tale of Caesar and the Christ with all those locations. So how, how did you even begin to tackle all of that? Well, I mean, like everybody sitting in this front row, we had a lot of amazing help. I had a lot of amazing help. I had, uh, you know, Dawn Swiderski as the supervising art director, and, and she assembled a team of people, seasoned veterans and sort of new people coming in. And it was, I wasn't around during the art departments of, of the 50s where the, you know, the production designer like Cedric Gibbons was basically on staff like the movie stars were, but... We think we sort of treated it like that, and we had um, the uh, old Samuel Golden Studios on on Formosa. Yeah, the lot. The lot, it's called, and I think they have six stages there. And we had five of them, and they were just we were rotating in and out of of, of each thing, and we just had an extraordinary group of uh, of, of set designers and and assistant art directors and art directors and. Um, you know, just sort of handling each thing, but we, we had to come up with a, you know, a theme for, for each film, and certainly we watched a lot of, a lot of old movies, and, um, you know, recreating Hollywood in Hollywood, and being uh, a production designer, and, and, you know, getting to, to, to redo those movies was something quite special, and, um, one one thing that was extraordinary, I, I thought that um, we had a researcher on uh, this kid Lance, and 
he he went missing for a couple of days, and then <laughs> I don't I, whatever people doing. I'm not watching anybody, and he, and he came back from the UCLA archives with some original drawings of Quo Vadis, which was our sort of benchmark for the Roman. Oh. You all right there? You take yeah. it easy. You gonna be? <laughs> And it I was. I get excited about research. No, this thing was. I got. I will show you this thing. And um, and he came back, and he 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 had scanned it, and he unfolded his thing, and he was like, they were throwing all these drawings out, and UCLA was it? I assure you, that's the story behind them, though. Yeah. yeah. And um, so um, the amazing thing was these things were. Um, you know, they were all drawn up in 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 Rome uh, 70 years ago, and I unfolded them and I looked at them, and the extraordinary thing was, it was just like we do it today. It was just, they were, I mean, yes, do we do things on computers today, but you know, there was a plan, there was an elevation, there was a detail, there was, there was, and it was just beautifully done, and it was validation, because, you know, I had been working on some of these sets and planning them out, uh, especially some of the, um, Hail Caesar, the, the, the Roman epic things. And we were like, are we doing it right? Is it a Roman courtyard or, you know, things. And then it was just this amazing validation. So anyway, I thought that was like, it was great. And we actually used a couple of uh, uh, one painted backing from Ben-Hur in right. the movie. Yeah. All, all the backings we created that you just saw on that, we, we, there was one, everything we, we painted um, by hand. Wow. Yeah. I might have gotten off your question a little no, bit. No, no, no. It's, it's a circular kind of conversation. There's no linear beginning or end here. I mean, um, it, just to follow up on the, UC, the UCLA Special Collections was one of the really critical safe harbors for research at a time when, because the, the studios wanted no assets. So a lot of those things found their way into those special archives. They won, USC has one, Academy, the Herrick Library has it, the ADG, we have it. Um, there are very few safe harbors for these materials, but they exist. And, and to sit there and actually look at the original drawings or a piece of model or anything, they, they, they're very tactile, special experiences. And, uh, you know, it's nice to be, to look at the masters, you know, you steal from the best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look at that work and the quality of that work, you can only help but... Uh, uh, and, that, and that's why it's good to, everything that we're doing now is, you know, going to be looked at and, you know, 50 years from now, so it's interesting. So to follow up on that, um, because yours is a very much an in-camera endeavor, I mean, that I guess the top of the temple when he comes out the doors, was that a set extension, or was that all, do you build that whole facade? The, oh, yes, the very, the very top pediment on that was, um, was some set extension, yeah. But, but uh, the legs and the fig leaf was real, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say 90% uh, of the movie was in camera. Um, which, you know, which was a treat to do something of, you know, a scale, sizable thing like this, um, you know, and, and do most of it in camera. And the follow-up to that, to that, that was actually the opener of the question. The actual the question was, in relearning what had been done in years past by these crafts and the designers and the craftsmen, what about it you know, sort of impressed you the most in terms of how they approached uh, in-camera filmmaking, and what did you find both as a challenge and as an aha, this is great, and I wish we could do more of that? I mean, I just think it was, it was a sense of pride when you look at all those, you know, we had tons of research available to us because you're in Hollywood making a story about Hollywood, and, you know, it was just a pride that is still very much here, but, you know, a lot of times you, you'll, you'll be doing something and then, they'll go, oh, well, we'll fix it later in post. We'll fix it later in post. So it's not like... You know, and people came to work with, with jackets and ties and, you know, put on, like, fancy aprons when they were sculpting. Did you all have things. to dress up in the art department? We wanted to. I, 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 you know. um, but, great. But, <laughs> no, no, we, 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 we didn't, though. But, but you kind of felt like it was also we worked, uh, our art department was at the lot, at the stages, which doesn't, in my experience, doesn't happen a lot. So you got to draw something and then go run out and see if, and we used the mill there too. Was it being, you know, done, uh, you know, to to your liking, and the painting, and then going back. So it was, it was pretty cool. But I, I just, um, I don't know. Everything was really, everything was really big back then, and big scale, big movie stars, big sets, mm -hmm. big set dressing, big drapes, 
big, you know, fake marble painting, you know. Huge. Yeah, just like, um, it was serious. It was, they, they took it really, you know, um, I don't know, I just, the scale of things were really, really, you know, quite, quite big, so. And, and the movie, the movie was not, you know, it was pretty small budget, so we had to be sort of creative about, you know, how, how we went about things and what exactly we were going to see, so like we all do, so nothing, nothing, everything goes on the screen and it's not wasted. So uh, we've talked a lot about relationships and of course you have a relationship with the Coen brothers and with Nancy, mm -hmm. your set decorator. So can you talk a little bit about the, sh the shorthand that, that you've developed with both the, I mean, I, I'm sure that the question every, that's on everybody's minds here is how is it to work with the Coen brothers? Does one take more, more care with the, the look of it and one is more with the, the actors or do they both participate together? And then also uh, Nancy has worked with them even longer, yes. right? Yeah. And so that relationship, if you could yeah. just tell everybody. Yeah. Um, as far as uh, one, one of them taking the reins more than they, it's 50-50 uh, it's across yeah. the board. And, um, and they're both super creative, you know, people in what they write and, uh, you know, even what they bring to the, to the art department, the, the, the ideas are, or you know, pretty. The collaboration is pretty amazing. And since I've done six movies with them, you know, like a, like anybody else, if you work with somebody, there's just a certain trust that you don't, that you just that you're just gonna get. So you can cut all of that out. Right. Um, you know, when a lot of times, when, you know, production designers, we all get hired on a job and working for somebody the first time. That's uh, there's a pretty competitive. Uh, interview process and you know and a lot of it has to do with yes what you've you know, what you're pitching the idea is but also um, are you gonna get along with the, these people for six eight nine, ten months or something like that and I know those guys pretty well it's not we're not tight we're not buddies we don't you know go to Yankee games together uh, <laughs> but um, you're losing these days anyway so. <laughs> uh, but I get them, I get them, and, and, and they get me, and they trust Nancy and I, and it's not that we do things without telling them, but it's um, the, the, the feeling out process is, you know, it, it, it's gone, you know what I mean? So we, we, we just, you know, oh, I got an idea, I'll, I'll be back in a couple of weeks and I'll, you know, show you something. That, I mean, that's my normal process, like I think probably all of us, are like, you read a script and then you take, you know, a few weeks and you, you know, you think about it and you come back with uh, what, what you think you can do and then, oh, this is great, that's not so, you know, you like that. And um, I, at this point, I just have an understanding which just makes my job easier and, and actually more fun because I get to just try different things. Uh, you had that unique privilege, so we don't get to do that much stage tank work anymore and you got to open up the big tank there at MGM and bring it back to life and and then do a changeover from from uh, Esther Williams to uh, U-boats so that's uh, that's quite uh, quite an undertaking yeah that was incredible I had, I had worked on that stage uh, many times before stage 30 at, at Sony but it was uh, it is the stage that was built for Esther Williams with the with the tank and half of the stage the plugs come out and you you know you you fill it up and it uh, um, it needs a lot of work these days. There's a lot of rules that go into. It's different than when Esther Williams was diving from the perms into water. And I promise you, there's a lot of bylaws that you have to abide by. But um, it was incredible. It was uh, life imitating art, and it was uh, you know we got to we got to do synchronized swimming scenes in a place that it was built for and build some ridiculous you know colorful orchestra set and have her, you know, rise up and, the, you know, the guys are like, she has to, you know, rise up in something. And I'm like, well, what about an ice cream sundae cup? And they're like, yeah, that's great. So <laughs> she goes like up in that thing and, it, you know, it was, it was pretty, it, it was using that stage for what it was used for, you know, 60, 70 years ago was, was extraordinary. And then we did all the submarine work in there um, as well, uh, we we hand painted um, these night sky backings and surrounded three sides of the pool with that. And then the fourth side was was the submarine. Um, you know, the 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 full length of the pool. I think it was about 100 feet. 
Um, and a couple of times you saw off it, so that was extended a little a little bit. But um, it, w it was it was I really uh, that whole thing because that was re that was real in the movie. It wasn't a movie, but I also wanted to make it feel like it was a movie. So uh, very much North by Northwest um, Hitchcock was 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 in you know Roger Deakins in my mind and uh, you know creating that thing. So that. Um, yeah, using that tank was uh, was, uh, was probably the highlight of the movie, a highlight of many highlights. Also, what, what I was t struck by was that you really used backings the way backings were intended to be used. You know, in contemporary films, for those of you who aren't familiar, we we sometimes have to use backings, but we're trying to cheat something and hide it. But in the old movies. They really were. They were backings, and they sort of embraced it. And and I, it seemed like you were really getting to that. Um, um, so all of them were created for the movie, or um, I I think well like well, like I said, we used that one for for from Ben Hur, right? Except that, uh, which really the perspective wasn't even right. But I was like, we're using this anyway because <laughs> it's you know it's history. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, we painted it, and I think we painted about 15 of them over at JC Backings. They're incredible over there, um, and um, yeah, we went, we manufactured most of them except for I think that um, that 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 Ben Hur one. And you know, I think all, the quality of all of the Coen Brothers movies is um, is always a little fake to me. For what for, for, for you know. For lack of a better word, that they're always that it's definitely heightened reality, but even the reality is 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 a little fake. And there was there was going to be no room for a photographic backing um, in any of these sets because they had to all, all just look like you know they were manuf the period. Every, yeah the period and was manufactured um, at at Capitol Pictures at a movie at a movie studio. In this case, they were painted in the original um, back back painting studio there at MGM. So. Well, that's the other thing that was great. Across from the 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 Esther Williams tank is J.C. Backings, which has been when did it start? Nineteen thirty-eight. Yeah, nineteen thirty-eight. It was the state of the art building, and uh, those students that are available will have our, our hopefully will have our open house in the first weekend in Jan uh, June. Yeah, it's, where we put a lot of those backdrops up in the frames for people to see close up. Right. So I wanted to shoot a scene in there. I, I oh yeah. I couldn't get it. I just Eddie Mannix walking through that. Oh. It's an. It's if anybody hasn't been there, I hope they get to go. It's an incredible facility. That's well, that's fantastic. Just great work. Thank you. Can we uh, queue up La La Land, please? <laughs>